This week on Crossfeed. Kiss in at the Mormon Temple. Heavy Metal Jesus. Traditional versus Contemporary. Are all homosexuals godless Christian bashers? And arrested if you do that voodoo. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Crossfeed Religious News. I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, pastor of St. <laughs> oh, I did it again. Okay. Let me try that again. Pastor of Shepherd of the Ridge Lutheran Church in North Ridgeville, Ohio, outside of Cleveland. Boy, I was so... I wanted to get that right. <laughs> He doesn't know where he is. Hey, folks, Jim Butler, pastor of St. Luke's Lutheran Church in Dedham, Massachusetts, still hasn't changed any. So, um, hey, it's good to be back with everybody after a month. It's been a month that we've been gone. Yeah, yeah. I'm still in the, living in boxes. So I can tell. <laughs> you see the, yes, this, I don't know if it'll show up in the last thing, but I've got, you know, banana boxes behind me. <laughs> this podcast is brought to you by Dole. <laughs> So I don't know if I'd worry about the the boxes as much as it is the the wide open windows there with no curtains over them. You know, oh, at least there's, a, there's blinds. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there's blinds. I just put them up because the sun was shining in before. But uh, given that now I'm in the Eastern Time Zone, just like Jim, it's not as bright. <laughs> Usually, you can watch the sun go down behind me when I was in Central Time Zone recording this an hour earlier, but um, not anymore. So, well, we congratulate Dale on his new call and um, hope that everything goes well for him out there in Ohio. And um, hopefully it was – I just got back. My big news was I was – spent a week at Camp Pine Shore in uh, central Massachusetts, uh, which has been, oh gosh, around for a long time in New England. Uh, but it uh, originally was run by five churches um, – from the National Evangelical Lutheran Synod, which people generally have never heard of. It's uh, a small Finnish body that um, merged with the Missouri Synod back in the early 1960s. And so, uh, very Finnish area. Um, it's, it's, uh, that takes a little bit of getting used to. Um, the, 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 the head of it, uh, his name's John, but everybody calls him Yusi, which is John in Finnish. <laughs> and so, um, and the church up there even has a Finnish service once a month. So, uh, and also there's a good church, a bunch of churches up there from the Apostolic Lutheran Church, which is a Finnish body. Okay. So, um, so you learn a lot about Finns up there. Anyway, um, but it was a great, 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 great camp. The up kids want me back, so can't ask for more than that. So, where should we start here? Um, boy, I, you know, I, I was trying to come up with some, oh, okay. All right. All right. All right. We we're talking about the Finns. All right. How about we talk about the Swedes? Ooh, right next door. All right. All right. So, uh, this is in, in Sweden and it is the metal sanctuary. Um, Sweden's first church for metalheads and hard rockers. It's open in mid-May, and uh, and basically it's a Christian church that's reaching out to uh, people who are into heavy metal music. Uh, it's not an actual, there's no physical church as of yet. Um, their metal masses, their services, uh, take place in people's homes. Okay, it wouldn't be a thing that I would be into. Um, but you know what I thought was interesting about this is it, it get Sweden is nominally Lutheran. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, you kind of, you know, um, which may, and, and of course it was a 98% have no church involvement or something like that. I mean, it's, it's an incredible, incredible high number over there. Um, because it's a state church. I mean, so it was a state church, but, um, you know, so with that kind of apathy, maybe this is not what I, I, I you know, I, I hear this and I'm like, eh, there's probably, eh. mm -hmm. but you know, 
uh, another part of me, you know, Paul says in, in Philippians, he says, you know, some preach Christ out of envy, some do it for good reason, but what's it matter so long as Christ is preached? And if I have the, you know, if they're if they're sharing Christ, even if it's something I would never go near, um, especially in an area where, you know, nobody, you know, that they have beautiful cathedrals, but they're all empty. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe it's not such a bad thing. Yep. Now um, they've also developed the Metal Bible, which is a New Testament with testimonials from metalheads describing the positive impact of God, Jesus, and the Bible in their lives. And uh, includes people like uh, Nico McBrain from Iron Maiden and Tommy Aldrich from Whitesnake. Now, I, I didn't know Tommy Aldrich was a Christian. I knew there were Christians in Iron Maiden because there's a lot of Christian overtones in, in their uh, music. In fact, they've got in their Live After Death um, CD, if you look at the back of it, there's this great uh, quote from H.P. Lovecraft. He's actually talking about Cthulhu, but the first time I read it, I went, Wow, that sounds really Christian because it's talking about the resurrection. <laughs> so it's just you know, it's it's a matter of context, you know. But yeah, it's a, um, mm-hmm. it it just kind of struck me. I was like, until, until I figured out what I was actually talking about, I was like, wow, that sounds really Christian. Talking about uh, you know, even death may die, and and that, and, and I don't know, that sounds like you know, revelation, and so um, <clears throat> it's, you know, there's there's a it's surprising. Um, how many heavy metal bands, because, you know, they've sort of been maligned as being, you know, well, if you're into heavy metal, you're immediately a Satanist and all this kind of stuff. And um, and it's amazing how many of them are outspoken Christians. Uh, Gary Sharon uh, from Extreme, and he was also for about a year the lead singer of Van Halen uh, until they kicked him out, actually, for his, um, because he was an outspoken Christian. Um but uh, extreme. If you have, if you get a chance to get a hold of some of their older stuff, uh, they're a secular band, but they've got a lot of Christian overtones. In fact, they've got this great song called "Watching Waiting," uh, that is uh, basically told from the point of view of the uh, centurion at the foot of the cross, if I remember right. Um, but there's you know the Trinity and all kinds of stuff in there, and um, and they've got an anti-abortion song uh, called uh, "Rock a Bye Bye" and. Um, so he became, he specifically Gary Sharon, when he was with Van Halen, um, he started really speaking out against abortion and, um, but he, he brought his faith into it too. Not, you know, he just wasn't, he wasn't just talking from a kind of a secular standpoint and, um, you know, the the rock and roll world kind of went, what? (laughs) And, um, you know, and Van Halen's got kind of a party, um, image, and so this really didn't fit with their image, so it didn't last very long. But um, uh, Twisted Sisters had a lot of um, sort of at least religious, I don't know if I could really call it Christian, but uh, they sound almost Roman Catholic um, in a lot of their stuff. Well, in fact, they put out a Christmas album not too long ago. Um, um, but. Uh, so, you know, this doesn't surprise me. You, you definitely um, heavy metal and and Christianity have had their connections. There have been a lot of of uh, heavy metal, you know, contemporary Christian kind of bands. Mm-hmm. I don't know, anybody's watching the video, I don't know what the deal is that we keep getting this weird flashing going on. The, so I apologize for that. I don't know what's going on. But so I... Yeah, you know, I guess what it comes down to is whatever works, you know, when when you're that desperate to to get the gospel to people, you know, sometimes you got to go to the extremes to to reach people that um that you might not reach. Yeah. Well, I would say in 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 a world and a nation that's as spiritually dead as Sweden, where it's almost like well, we've heard it all before. Maybe, you know, by yelling a bit louder, you can be heard. <laughs> so, um, oh. I, I, I say rock on, dude. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, although, I got to wonder if this picture is, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't so sure about that one. 
so I won't go there anyway. Uh, well, let's let's deal with uh, you know kind of the the story that would kind of go along with that then uh, about this one editor uh, in writing in um, uh, what was he writing in uh, Charlotte World Christian newspaper Warren Cole Smith. I have no idea who he is. Never heard of him before. Nope. Um, and um, um, he uh, you know he's published a he book. Says, uh, what? He's published a book. Um, yeah. Doesn't even give the name of the book. No. But I anyway, go and read the he, article, but I can't remember it. Yeah. Uh, I I can't I can't find it anyhow. Um, in which he you know really kind of takes some pot shots of some stuff. Uh, you know, contemporary Christian music, too much shallow Jesus, my boyfriend songs. Uh, <laughs> you know. All right. Uh, Power so, presentation. You want? Go ahead. Okay, so he hits on on a few points. All right, he talks about contemporary Christian music and the sort of Jesus is my boyfriend songs. He talks about uh, the use of technology, uh, Twitter, yeah. PowerPoint, some like that, stuff like that in church. Um, and he talks about uh, what's the other? There's three things. I think um, Joel Austin. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> Joel Osteen and and other um, sort of mega church pastors. Not not uh, specifically megachurch pastors in general but the the ones that are sort of following in Joel Osteen's path okay uh, number one um, okay contemporary Christian mu music in my opinion follows Sturgeon's law you know which Theodore Sturgeon famous uh, science fiction writer once said 90% of science fiction is crap but then 90% of everything is crap <laughs> So, I mean, you could say that, about, but it's also true of traditional hymnody. There's a mm. lot of that stuff that is, you know, oh, gosh, I walk in the garden alone. You know, and the dew is still in the roses, and he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. I mean, if that's not pure enthusiasm, you know, uh, I don't know what is. I mean, you know, they're talking about Jesus is my boyfriend. Uh, that's, you know, you know, we're sitting there holding hands, I guess. I don't know. I mean, it's the same type of stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I mean, it's 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 in the garden for the emo crowd, you know. <laughs> One of the kids told me at camp every time I meet a guy, he's either emo or gay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just love that line. Anyway, yeah. So okay, um, now. Uh, 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 Okay, the, 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 it's interesting because he, he completely says you see the PowerPoint pre presentation projection systems, but you got to spend an hour looking to find a cross or an altar. In 20 years, we could almost completely discarded the historic symbols of Christianity. And the sad thing is, he's not only right, but he's although <laughs> you're evangelical, buddy, you're from a reformed tradition. That was Calvin, okay? You know, go, go back, you know, Calvin didn't want an altar, and he didn't want a cross either, so go back to your, 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 your forebearer there. But, yeah, he's actually I mean, Presbyterian, so yeah, he's really Calvinist. Yeah. You know, uh, but part of the issue is, though, is that was done deliberately, I mean, by some of them. You know, uh, uh, Bill Hybels deliberately did away with the cross. You know, and deliberately went to an auditorium, a, a church that looked like an auditorium, not like a church. Yeah, so yeah. it's not. This is no coincidence here. Now, and he actually. Now, this is interesting. He he talks about, uh, and this is in the um, the article that he um, talking about the book. He talks about um, Twitter. Now, you know, and I think you hear about people twittering in church where they like send notes uh, to the pastor. Um, I've seen people. Uh, that I, and I mentioned before on the show, uh, where they they sort of take basically take notes on the sermon via Twitter, so that anybody that's not there can get a summary of the sermon that way. And they they kind of hit the highlights, and um, which I always thought was kind of kind of a good um, you know outreach kind of thing. Uh, but he says you know if if you're doing Twitter and and that you're you're becoming an um, audience and and not actively involved. And I thought I don't know that. It sounds pretty actively involved. I'm not sure that I, you know, I've, I've got mixed feelings about, um, about 
the whole using Twitter in church and, and stuff like that. And, and I can definitely see it distracting other people. You know, you just imagine you're sitting there and the guy in front of you is, is sitting there, you know, with his Blackberry or his iPhone or something like that. And it's like, Hey, pay attention. It's like, well, yeah, he really is, you know, but it's just not, you know, it, it, I, I've known other people that, that take notes, you know, during church and, um, and, so, but we're more used to, if someone has a, you know, a notepad and they're writing in there, that's not going to, uh, you know, get the same reaction as someone who's got, that looks like they're texting their buddies while they're, you know, so. And as far uh, as going after Joel Osteen, come on, I'm talk about low hanging fruit here, folks. You know, I mean, um, there was a, a great book, uh, gosh, published 20 years ago, um, maybe closer to 25. God, you know, when I was doing, I was up at uh, the um, camp and I was talking to the kids and talking about, you know, sharing your faith. And I talked about something that happened in my vicarage and this one teen sharing her faith. And there's some really cool stuff happened. And all of a sudden I looked at them and said, you know, those two girls are old enough to be your mother. <laughs> <laughs> They're both 41 now. God, do I feel old. Anyway, uh, so. Yeah, you're great uh, here Michael showing, Ford, Jim. <laughs> Especially the mustache, um, but uh, a friend of mine, uh, but but uh, um, uh, Michael Horton um, wrote, uh, who you know, head of Reformation today, wrote a great book back in the 1980s called uh, "The Agony of Deceit," in which he was already going after some of these, you know, the, the, which which is Austin is uh, the triumphalistic. Follow these seven rules. You have a great life, great money. God gives you everything. Stuff. I mean, that's been around forever, though. Uh, uh, Kenneth Copeland, uh, all those, you know, Oral Roberts, all those guys were into that. It's the same theology. It hasn't changed. Joe Austin just Austin just happens to be a little bit slicker about it. That's all. Yeah, he's got the biggest church in the country. <laughs> so you know, got I don't know why. Him. When I was in Avery, when I was in. Um, Florida in April uh, for my dad's funeral, uh, we were flipping channels and he came on and I sat there listened to him for about twenty minutes, and I, uh, I had no idea. I mean, great stories, very engaging, but I sure no cross, no Jesus, no no death. It was all about God is uh, somebody's out there making unrighteous mammon for you and you're going to get it. Hmm. Wow. Uh, well, you know, but the thing is. That's what a lot of people want to hear. You know, I mean, really, like, you know, the, there's, uh, oh, there's this great song by a Christian artist named Grover, um, Dow, I can't even think of his last name. Um, the little blue furry guy, big pink nose. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, Grover Lee, I can't remember. Um, but anyway, the it's, cake? it's, uh, he says, uh, the the chorus goes, "Won't you tell us what we want to hear? Um, tell us where the victims play on our fears. Um, tell us what we want to hear. Tell us that we're blameless. We'll make you rich and famous. And um, and yeah, it's that whole thing. It's you know, tell us tell us what we want to hear. Tell us, oh, well, you know, if your life's not going bad, oh, poor you. But you know, um, God loves you, and you're going to get rich soon enough. And you know, and and, and this." Oh, Jesus? Well, yeah, he's part of that whole equation, too, somewhere, and, you know... Um, uh, what was his name uh, in the 80s? Robert Till. Yeah, he was the same thing, too. You know, he uh, went to, right up until Primetime Live uh, found uh, all these letters from people in the dumpster behind his place. You know, you know, money removed. You know, yeah. and all these letters asking for prayers and stuff, you know, and... Uh, um, and 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 it was a, and then his, and then his thing went and imploded like overnight uh, after that. But there it is it, again. It's just that that really sad. Um, yeah, get the you know Jesus is there to make me rich. Yeah, which is you know, and the saddest part about it is that Jesus offers us so much more. You know, that that you you know, I mean, this is what the the um. The, uh, today I was preaching on uh, Jesus call me, or um, uh, walk across the water and mm -hmm. he gets in the boat and the waves stop. All right, and right before that, 
um, was the feeding of the 5,000. And the people wanted to make him their king because they, you know, he fed them. He filled their bellies. And for most of these people, it was probably the first time in their lives uh, that they'd ever had a full belly. Um, and uh, so, woohoo, hey, you know, he's going to give us bread. All right. And and that's that's Joel Osteen's message. He's going to give you bread, you know, um, the green uh, paper kind. And so... Jesus, you know, dispersed the crowds, told the disciples, get out of here, because that's not why he came, all right? He came because we need so much more than that. You know, we need a cure for death. We need the forgiveness of sins. He came to bring us that stuff, all right? If he just came to give us bread, to give us, you know, the things we need in this life, he didn't need to die for us, all right? He came to die and to rise again, all right? And because of that, you know, it's it's like, who cares if I have a lot of money? It doesn't matter. Who cares, you know, if if I'm struggling financially, all right? Yeah, it makes my life more difficult, but I've got the resurrection to look forward to. And that's mm-hmm. going to make all this a moot point. So just hang in there until then, you know? I mean, it's the solution to every problem. But no, instead, you know, let's focus on the um, on, on just this, this paltry little thing. You know, oh, money, big deal. All right. Well, especially if you look at today's uh, second reading from from Ephesians, my favorite you know writings that are Paul says, God is able to do far more abundantly than all we can think or imagine. Uh, you know, ah, wow, dream more, imagine. Think about that for a second. You know, uh, that. Uh, yeah, you know, money's part of this world. It's part of the stuff that's going to pass away. You know, so uh, God is, uh, you know, much greater than that. So yeah, that's that's all that word faith stuff. And by the way, Joel Austin was part of uh, his father hung out with Kenneth Hagen and um, Oral Roberts and Robert Tilton. So uh, all those guys who are into that kind of stuff. So yeah, this is all part of though. Uh, 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 name it, claim it, market, park it, uh, and uh, you know. But it, it, it's a sad theology. But okay, so this guy, you know, I mean, hate to say it, that's low hanging fruit. Fruit. Nice that he went after it, but you know. Uh, but I'm not sure I agree with him with the Jesus is my boyfriend. Um, yeah, let's see. You just yeah. gotta weed through stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You do. Ah. Uh, Speaking of waiting through, let's go over and deal with voodoo here. Okay. You do voodoo. <clears throat> oh, by the way, everybody, you need to congratulate you. I'll, I'll, I'll rejoice with my wife and I. I should have mentioned this at the beginning of the store. Uh, um, that my is it a show that my uh, son Joshua has become engaged to his girlfriend. Congrats, Josh. So we're extremely happy about that, and um, yeah, he uh, they got engaged out in Springfield, which was what you know where uh, where that they both grew up in the western part of the state, and which was also the home of Dr. Seuss. And so my son did was thinking then, and this is what made me think of this: things that you do voodoo. He was going to ask her to marry her, marry him by saying, "Would you? Could you marry me? Would you? Could you in a tree? Would you marry me here or there? Would you marry me anywhere? (laughs) (laughs) So, we have a different sense of humor. So, you know, here it is, you know, voodoo, you know, would you voodoo, you know, voodoo, voodoo. Uh, (laughs) So so she agreed to marry him, even knowing who her father-in-law would be. Yes, even even (laughs) Wow. Josh, she must really love you. <laughs> so, I think she. Right. I think it's. I think she's looking at the, at the mother-in-law rather than me. I think she's trying to. You know, yeah, I, we don't really claim him <laughs> as part of the family. But anyway, back to this voodoo here. Um, Mary Lord in uh-huh. New York City. Yeah, um, she she, uh, uh, she poured in accelerant. Her... Yeah, six-year-old daughter. 
um, she poured some sort of accelerant. So I don't know, you know, gas or lighter fluid or something like that. Um, over her daughter during a Haitian practice known as Loa and made her stand naked in a ring of fire engulfed her, engulfing her in flames. Um, so are you in the background you going to start playing Johnny Cash's Ring of Fire here? <laughs> the song did, you know, come to mind, but um, right. I, don't, I don't think that's what he had in mind with this song. Yeah, and then they... Just this woman and the girl's grandmother um, washed her and put her to bed, even though she had, you know, uh, apparently third degree burns over 25% of her body, that they were life threatening. Yeah. So she's in jail um, on assault and child endangerment. And um, she, uh, grandmother faces a later arraignment. The girl's in foster care. Good. Well, duh. So, you know, I, I, I read this article and, and it just really saddened me. You know, there's actual, you, you look at the, the stuff in the Old Testament that talks about don't make your children pass through the fire, um, which is a reference to the Moloch uh, cult. Uh, if you want to, anybody wants to look that up, you can learn more about it. Um, some of the bales and, and that. Uh, it, you know, doing horrible, horrible things to your kids. Um, and, and, you know, there's a history of a lot of religions that where they've, you know, had human sacrifice, sacrifice your children, um, for the sake of, and a lot of times it was to, um, not, I don't know much about, uh, voodoo and, and the Loa, uh, practice, but, um, I, I was under the standing that Loa referred to some kind of spirits, ancestral spirits or something like that. It's like, you know, what is it, what could you possibly hope to gain that is more important than the safety of your children? You know, I'm thinking that if, you know, if I belong to some sort of ritualistic cult, that if I were doing some kind of ritual, I would be doing it for the sake of the safety of my children, not yep. jeopardizing it for the sake of something else. I mean, I just, I cannot imagine what I would possibly want more than, than the safety of my family. It just boggles my mind. But, you know, at the same time, this is that whole problem that, um, of, all right, whatever, however you define salvation or, or, or meeting your goals or, or needs or, or whatever, um, there's something you got to do. And, it's got to be something extreme. And I don't know. This is, I mean, this is just frightening. You're right. It, it, it's, it's pure, you know, idol worship, you know, and it goes right back, you know, like you said, you know, the, the, you know, you know I, I mean, I don't know. I don't even know what to say, you know, slap the mother upside the head, you know. You know, I'm all for freedom of religion, but, um, you know, obviously those laws, you know, we have laws in place where when your uh, freedom infringes on somebody else's safety or well-being that, you know, then uh, you've just given up that right. Um, and I just, you know, you look at, I'm, I'm just, I'm looking at this and saying, why would anyone even want to be a part of this? You know, how... And I mean, but then again, the, the grandmother's involved, you know, she was born and raised in this. Right. Uh, but this is voodoo. Voodoo is all about, again, controlling the gods and the goddesses. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's controlling them. It's, uh, it's really hard, you know, to, to talk to people. But, the, you know, then again, you look at, um, uh, Native it's black magic. Yeah. But, uh, Native American, um, American Indian, whatever term you want to use, um, most of their uh, religious uh, practices were the same sort of thing. Um, you know, a lot of the um, the Middle Eastern cults were this kind of thing. Um, you know, even even uh, Hinduism um, is is a lot of that. 
Well, all pagan religions are all about controlling the gods and the goddesses to get them to do what you want. That's why Jesus was saying don't pray like the pagans do, who think they're going to be heard by their babbling, by their many words, because it's all about saying the right words, controlling the gods and the goddesses, and getting, controlling them, or, or by a spell, getting them to do what you want. I mean, that's what voodoo is all about. It's the same type of thing, only on a different, slightly different level. In this case, being very much black magic. Uh, but, you know... <sighs> Now, you know, what, you know, poor kid has to do with that? I don't know. But these gods and goddesses, I mean, they, they, you know, the gods, false gods always demand a sacrifice. Idols always demand a sacrifice. Yeah. Problem is, That's sacrifice, so. the sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice has already been made. Right. So. So anytime anybody demands a sacrifice, um, you know, demands it, Sorry. Sacrifice has already been made. You know, and for that matter, you mentioned Oral Roberts and the, um, remember a number of years ago when he said, oh, God said if I don't raise a million dollars or whatever it was, um, or was it, I forget how much it was, he's going to call me home, you know? Yep. God's well, that was to open up his hospital, which is now closed. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, yeah. And uh, you know what? And how would have said, have a good time. See you when I get there. Um, you know, uh, so, um, I don't know. Okay, well, now we have to deal with, you know, our, our, our obligatory gay stories. <laughs> um, uh, which one do you want to deal with? Well, let's deal with George Barna first. Okay. All right, so we had a, a Barna study. The, those not familiar, the Barna group does a lot of surveys, specifically things relating to Christianity and uh, mm -hmm. spiritual matters and things like that. And, um, the, now the article itself that we're, um, kind of referencing is, uh, from Joe Garofoli, not sure how to pronounce his name, um, from the San Francisco, um, Chronicle Chronicle. And so, um, He's, you know, this is a blog article, and so he definitely you can see his, his bias, and it's kind of what you'd expect coming from San Francisco, but, um, you know, in, you know, if you'll excuse a little stereotyping, but uh, he fits the mold. So, um, but he quotes Barna saying, uh, people who portray gay adults as godless, hedonistic Christian bashers are not working with the facts. A substantial majority of gays cite their faith as a central facet of their life, consider themselves to be Christian, and claim to have some type of meaningful personal commitment to Jesus Christ active in their life today. It's interesting to see that most homosexuals who have some, Christ some history within the Christian church have rejected orthodox biblical teachings and principles, but in many cases to nearly the same degree that the heterosexual Christian population has rejected those same teachings and principles. Although there are clearly some substantial differences in the religious beliefs and practices of the straight and gay populations, there may be less of a spiritual gap between straights and gays than many, than many Americans would assume. All right. <clears throat> Although, <laughs> while 7 out of 10, every 10 homo heterosexual, 70% have an orthodox biblical perception of God, just 33% 30, 40, of homosexuals do, in fact, an equal percentage possess the equal, a pantheistic view about the deity. <laughs> Which is a pretty major uh, difference right there. Right. Um, I mean, okay. <clears throat> I, I, I mean, the fact, though, that there is like the Metropolitan Community Church, which, um, you know, claims to be Christian and gay, uh, you know, you know, the fact that, um, you know, uh, some churches, um, the LCA, the, the Episcopalians, you know, most liberal churches have a, a strong outreach out of homosexuals. I mean, you know, you know, Gene Robinson up in uh, uh, New Hampshire. You know, partnered gay man as bishop. Um, okay, I'm just, this 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 does not surprise me. Mm -hmm. uh, nor does it surprise me though that you know, uh, um, you know, there's, you know, yeah, they're not all or you know, not all that orthodox, but you know, uh, kind of the same percentage of the straight population. Well, yeah, given and they're all members of the same churches. Go figure. Yeah. So, um, 
It says uh, heterosexuals are twice as likely as homosexuals to strongly agree that the Bible is totally accurate in all its principles that it teaches. That you know, and, and the thing is, that's actually a huge difference. Um, mm -hmm. And because once you and I was uh, talking to a conservative Methodist, Methodist about this this week, um, <clears throat> and and we agreed that uh, you know once you throw away the um, the Bible, or at least sort of pick and choose what you like from it, you know, all bets are off. And, you know, so if you don't like the parts that say that homosexuality is sin and talk about, um, you know, the, the blessings that God has for us in his definition of marriage, um, you know, if, if you don't want that, then, you know, you can, you can do whatever you want. But if you're going to throw that out, what's to stop you from throwing out the cross? Well, I, it, what you're doing, of course, is you're putting yourself over Scripture. And, Telling you know, God what he should think. And it goes right back to Genesis. Mm -hmm. Did God really say? Boy, we haven't really come very far in you know, a few thousand years. As somebody once said, there's no such thing as new heresy, just recycled old ones. That's pretty much true, too. Yeah, so same thing here. No, no, no new sin, just recycled old sin. Uh, Satan is obviously very green. He keeps recycling the same stuff. <laughs> Oh, well, that's all right. I, you know, I, I have the same problem though. I, I just keep recycling the Word of God and you know using it over and over. So, in my sermons and teaching and everything. So I, I have, I've never you know really come up with anything new. It's, it's the same old stuff. So it's true. You got to read a sermon, folks. It's the same one week after week. <laughs> it's the same time. I think you wrote it somewhere like his first year of seminary and just you know hasn't changed it since. I just changed the title each week. Nobody's listening anyway, so you know, nobody's noticed yet. So. That's why you have to change churches every so, every so often. You know, after a while, they, they catch on to the trick, and it's time to move on. <laughs> so I thought that was an interesting quote here. It's uh, from Pastor Samuel Chu of California Faith for Equality. He says, our faith-based values require us to love our neighbor as ourselves. Gay and lesbian people are our neighbors. They should be able to enjoy the dignity, respect, and commitment that come with marriage. All right. Up until that last part, I agree with him 100%. In fact, I would say I agree with all of it. Okay. But within um, God's parameters. You know, uh, because the reality is that loving someone doesn't necessarily mean giving them what they want. If you want that go to Joel Osteen's church, all right? <laughs> but, uh, you know, the reality is that sometimes you got to call sin a sin. Sometimes you got to say, look, you know, this isn't right, but you know what? This is a sin that Jesus died for. And I'm um, going you know, to be there for you to help you through this. And you know what? This is something that God can handle too. So, well, let's head over then to the Mormons. Well, you know, like, like you know, they are, 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 are they're not usually have an obligatory gay story and an obligatory Mormon story. This time we get two for one. Woo Gee, we're like, uh, you know, that's, so that just goes to show we don't have anything new on this show either. <laughs> that's right. Um, so apparently, there were the there is this uh, gay couple Matt and Derek, and they were cutting through Temple Plaza uh, in uh, Salt Lake City, where the you know Mormon tem first Mormon temple is located. And apparently, one gave one a hug and then a kiss on the cheek, and then they were approached by a security guard and telling them to leave because of what they were being inappropriate, and public displays of affection were not allowed on the property. Um, another guard showed up and the men were handcuffed. Um, and, uh, they, you know, they said then uh, that the guard said the two guys became argumentative and, uh, used profanity and refused to leave. And, uh, they were cited with misdemeanor trespassing. Uh, it doesn't matter what they are, that they were asked to leave. If they were asked to leave and they don't, they are trespassing. Um, okay, obviously you've probably all heard the news up here in Massachusetts about, uh, you know, the, the black scholar dealing with the police on his door 
and, and everything, which I looked at it and I just said, this is this is a huge overreaction. This is a huge overreaction. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I don't know what who gave the the more the the, the 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 security guard the power trip, but unless they were you know doing something, um, you know unless they were as Harry Potter would put it snogging out there on the um, uh, front steps, uh, I don't you know I I. I think to 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 put them for minor trespassing is going a little bit too far. I think. Uh, you know, the question is, um, you know, if another if a, another couple, you know, were walking in and holding hands, all right, you know, how do you define public displays of affection? And you know, is that for that matter, is there uh, can you know can they show that they have a a uh, rule on their books somewhere, you know, that, that that's not allowed or, is, right. you know, uh, no, the other thing, the other side of this though, is that we're only hearing half of the story. Okay. Right. We're only hearing it from the point of view of the couple. Or whatever. Um, yeah. The, 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 the church just put out this, this statement. Uh, you know, they were st- asked to stop engaging in inappropriate behavior just as any other couple would have been. But again, I mean, what would have been considered inappropriate? I, I mean, there's just so many different things. I mean, unless they were being totally obnoxious about everything. Right. You know. Um, so, but we now, don't, you know, the, the, the couple says it was just a kiss on the cheek and a hug. I, you know, we don't, we don't know. You know, right. we don't know all the facts. So we kind of have to look at this of, well, if, if this is the case, then this, and if this is the case, then that. And, you know, so if they were sort of, if it was more than that, if, if they were sort of making a display and, and, you know, sort of being obnoxious about it to the point that it was really making the other people um, uncomfortable or, or whatever, um, regardless of whether it was homosexual or heterosexual, um, you know, it's the whole... You, know, you you see people i mean i see a lot of times um uh you know kids uh you know teenagers and and that um uh, adults sometimes too um but you know where they're doing stuff in public that's just, just like you know you just kind of want to say get a room buddy you know and uh but it it's like I mean, that's just, it, it makes people uncomfortable and it's really, it's not appropriate to be doing that kind of thing in public. Now, um, and, you know, and in that case, Hey, you know, enough, you know, get out of here. And then so you can kind of imagine the, um, to, oh, well, you're just picking on us cause we're gay and you wouldn't say anything if we weren't. Okay. Um, and then you could just sort of imagine it escalating from there. Okay. The other side is, is simply, it was just a, peck on the cheek or whatever and and um no big deal and and really the security's best interest would have just been to like well we're just going to let that one go because we don't want a major incident about it um and uh and and they didn't and then there was a major incident um uh, and they should have just let it go so you know unless we have camera footage uh which i sincerely hope that there's not you know cameras i don't know maybe there are but um i i get nervous about too many surveillance cameras <laughs> but, but you know if it, unless there's some kind of proof one or the other it's sort of one guy's word against the other and um and it's kind of a mess but then this is sort of exploded though because then it was followed by actually two i think so far um kiss ins where couples, um, both homosexual and heterosexual, are coming and coming onto the property and kissing. Um, just as a, you're going to arrest us too, you know, kind of thing. And um, so. Like I said, might as well make it get, get overly excited about the whole thing. Yeah. I. I you know, this is on on the one hand. You know, you you talk about the um, 
that, that event at Harvard, on the one hand, they, they blew it out of proportion. And then you have um, the president who admitted that he didn't have all the facts and then he spoke on it anyway, um, which really I didn't think was very wise either. But then he sort of turns it into this whole racial profiling thing. And you don't know if that was the case or not. But, you know, what, should, what are you doing then? You're you're profiling, um, uh, you know, whites to say that they're all racist. <laughs> mm-hmm. But now, hold on a minute here. You know, that's completely hypocritical. So, <sighs> I just, I don't know. I, I don't get it. I, we've, we're so... We're we're so sensitive about about so many of these things that are, uh, we're, you know, in, in trying to keep the peace, it ends up becoming a war zone. So yep, there comes a time, you know, and we've talked about this before. That and and often um, when we talk about various stories regarding um, homosexuals, homosexuality, that it is a sin. All right. Um, it's a sin that God forgave or, or forgives. That it's a sin that Jesus died for. And, um, and, and yes, it's a, um, it's a harmful thing, no matter what uh, people tell you. And, um, but at the, at the same time, it's, you know, how would they, if, if it was, a uh, um, you know, a heterosexual couple that's not married or, you know, or whatever, um, or engaging in some other sort of sin, you know, how would they react the same way? And, um, and, and we need to understand that, that to God, sin is sin. And obviously on earth, not all sins are equal. Um, if, if I murder somebody, obviously the penalty is going to be different than if I, you know, kiss somebody in, in an inappropriate, um, public place. But, um, you know, I don't know, for some reason, um, certain, uh, certain sexual sins that really should be about on the same level are treated differently. Um, that, you know, uh, heterosexual promiscuity is seen as not as bad as homosexuality. And I really question that, you know, we, we talked in a previous episode, boy, was it just last time? Um, about uh, pornography versus homosexuality and which one is really doing more damage to um to marriage in the United States. So you know, I think it's it's important to get to keep some perspective about these things. So I you won't see me attending any kiss-ins um anytime soon. <laughs> I don't think you'll see me there either. But uh, now we had a, some feedback from George while we were on break. Uh, you want to share that? Yep. Um, in a note from George, it's uh, he said, uh, thanks for reviewing the backside of Mount Rushmore. Incidentally, as someone pointed out to me, Mount Rushmore is pretty far south of Canada. Um, it's sad that in most U.S. Lutheran churches, the evangelism committee just refused to do real evangelism. Um, that's going out and knocking on doors and telling people about the love of Jesus. My home congregation in the Roxborough section of Philadelphia is now an MRI center because of the Lutherans not doing real evangelism. My prayers are with you. Keep on preaching the gospel via the internet. God bless. Um, thanks, George, for the note. Um, the whole evangelism thing, I've been thinking about this a lot lately, actually, um, especially the whole door-to-door thing. And... Um, you know, I really think that the door-to-door evangelism, at least as it's well, frankly, practiced now by the um, by the Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses, um, and even the the Mormons are kind of getting away from it a little bit. Um, they're still doing it, but not as much. Uh, I think that it's kind of moving to be a thing of the past, and and maybe by necessity to some degree. Um, I, I think you can still do it. I think there are better ways to do evangelism in your community. Um, because nowadays, uh, people are just, uh, they're, you know, you go knock on their door and there's, and, uh, uh, you know, especially, and I'm thinking about, um, well, gee, come to think of it, I'm thinking about both the, 
the small rural community where I was and the uh, much larger community that I'm in now. Um, you know, people are suspicious. They, um, they don't want to be bothered in their home and, and things like that. And I think what we really need to do nowadays, um, you know, th- there was a time for that. Um, but nowadays, it's, it's really about establishing relationships, um, about having a reason um, to go and, um, and knock on somebody's door. You know, to say, oh, hey, um, you know, your kid's attending our church's preschool. And so I just wanted to stop in and, and see how you're doing. Or, or you know, or there's, there's a million different things that you can do to somehow find a connection with people and then go talk to them. And then they'll be much more willing to listen to what you have to say. Because otherwise, it's like, you know, you're just treating me like a merit badge. And even though that's not your intent, you know, that that's sometimes how it comes across. And, um, but, you know, if, if you can, if you can have some kind of connection with them, and, you know, and that means having some, it, it can mean having some sort of, um, uh, community events, um, at your church, um, or, or even it doesn't have to be at your church either. You know, it can be, you can, um, use a, a local rental, use a local uh, library conference room or, um, depending what you're doing or, or, or rent out a, a hall somewhere or, or, you know, who knows, um, you know, maybe that's what you need to do sometimes just to, um, because people aren't, might not, that might not come to your church might be willing to attend an event that's not at the church, maybe some, even, you know, out in the park or, or whatever, um, and, and you advertise it as this is some sort of community thing. Um, and, and if you want to put your church's name on it, sponsored by, um, eh, it's probably not a bad idea. Um, but to, you know, to sort of send a message, we're, um, we're here, we're all about the community. We want to um, take care of our community and stuff like that. You know, and people see that and they go, oh, well, that's, that's kind of cool, you know. And then they'll be more willing to listen to you and, and then you can share the message. And, but it's, it's, you know, really what it is, it's, it's not a, it's not like a bait and switch. It's just being honest about who you are and showing people who you are. Mm-hmm. So, but I would say that doing the door to door thing is better than nothing. So if, if that's the only thing you're doing, you know, it's better than doing nothing at all. And, and, and if, if churches are, are doing it, I mean, I wouldn't discourage them from doing it, but I would encourage them to, you know, to do other things too. Anything else we need to talk about? No, I think we got it. Thanks everybody, especially those who are subscribed and and stayed subscribed. Um, And thanks for your patience uh, while uh, we were transitioning. Uh, We just actually um, couldn't even do this last week. We still didn't have uh, decent internet in the house. We had some problems with the wireless setup, but um, hopefully, I don't know if the picture quality is better now than it was. Maybe if somebody um, that watches the video can comment on that, I'd love to hear from you um, what you think, because we have much faster uh, internet now here than about 10 times as fast as what we had before. So um, <laughs> it's been a real pleasant thing for us, and um, and I think it. it Hopefully it's it's gonna help out here again. I apologize for the kind of video uh, going out thing. I, I'm not sure what is going on with that. I'm I'm guessing it's some kind of Skype glitch. So, um, but thanks everybody for tuning in. Shout out to um, anybody that's uh, from the Cleveland area uh, that's watching us. Um, I'm doing a study on angels right now. Um, <laughs> Sunday mornings at nine o'clock. Stop by and and uh, would love to see you. Um, and, uh, you can, our church doesn't have a website yet, but we're working on it. And, um, so I'll, uh, once we get it up, I'll, I'll mention it on the show. Um, also anybody that's watching this on any of the video sharing sites, uh, YouTube or, you know, or anywhere else, um, you know, see if I can, uh, post this up on some of the local, uh, Cleveland, uh, uh, video sharing areas too. And, um, so if you're watching this on one of those, uh, you can go over to crossfeednews.com slash podcast and uh, you can watch this in much higher quality. And you, there's also information there um, about subscribing to the show so that when new episodes come out, you can get it. Um, if you're listening to the audio and not watching the video, this is available um, in both formats. And so all the information is on that same page uh, to find it in whatever format you want to find it. 
And so we welcome your feedback. You can send us an email like George did at podcast at crossfeednews.com. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in. And uh, we'll see you again, God willing, next week. Take care. God bless.